Hello, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of the Grateful Redhead Podcast. I'm Angie Ringler, your host, and today we are getting into the waste of PPE. We all know about it. The world has been inundated with medical waste that has come from the pandemic. How many times have you seen a random mask or glove or hand sanitizer bottle sitting in the parking lot of your local grocery store, your big box store? Almost anywhere you go, the stuff is showing up. So when I heard about Andy, who is our guest today, that he was really looking into how he has the sustainability for PPE mission. And I knew he was the right guy to have on my show. So without further ado, I want to introduce Andy and have him tell us a little bit about himself and the journey of how you got to this point. Now, I know you've been in medical sales, so I'm sure that's really what honed you in on this problem. So go ahead, Andy, and tell us about yourself. Well, first of all, Angie, thank you so much for having me on on, on the show. Longtime listener, first time guest. Um, woo! Woo! And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I've been to Florida, so I know you're from Florida. So there we go. So, uh, you know, something as a medical sales rep, you you always have this this crisis of ethics. Like, am I doing something right? Am I selling the right product? Am I doing the right thing? And for the last seven years, I've been working for a U.S. conglomerate here in Canada, and we we're selling masks and gowns and and gloves and and all that na- nasty PP that people need. Uh, but has uh, has only come when there's pandemic. Now, th- what was weird was that prior to COVID, nobody wanted to buy masks. You know, ah, we don't need masks. You know, people get the flu, whatever. And then, boom, came this sudden rush. There were shortages. And when there's shortages, people want stuff even more. And then as, as COVID progressed and we couldn't get medical supplies in Canada and we were getting inferior stuff coming in from all over the world, um, this started to cause a problem that the government highlighted. And that's when I jumped into action because as a patriot, I really wanted to um, do something for for us. And we started to figure out that just from COVID waste alone, you're talking about something like 68,000 tons a year was going to go to landfill. But nobody even realized that there's like four to five times that much coming out of hospitals, out of veterinary, out of dental, out of all the other health cares that we have in, in, in Canada and probably in the United States. So I, I leapt into action and said, this is my calling. I want to leave my job of selling stuff and I want to take the stuff that's going into the landfill and find a way to, to repurpose it. And I found some like-minded partners and that's what we did. And and I've been ever I've been able to sleep better at night since then. So you started a business to do this. What's the name of the company? Believe it or not, I started two businesses to do this. So I started the first business called Lifecycle Revive, which was the plastics making. So essentially you would take a mask, you would remove the aluminum and and the nylon loops. And what's left is this plastic blank. And that blank goes into a machine that shreds it and turns it into plastic pellets. And then those plastic pellets can be injection molded into other parts, or it could be turned back into the fabric that you need. But we realized one thing when two or three months into the job, we realized, well, we need somebody to disassemble this stuff. You know, we need another company to take care of this. So my partner said, well, Andy, you're the innovative guy. Why don't you go out there and do it? So I found two other partners, the M and the E and MEA Health, and we created um, that company. And we joke a lot and say that we are the Oompa Loompas to Life Cycles Willy Wonka. So there we go. That's a good visual. <laughs> I mean, listen, you know, that that Willy Wonka factory does not work without the Oompa Loompas. So very exactly. important part of, yes, yeah, very important part. So did you realize when you were marketing these products, you know, when you were a salesperson for these products, did you realize that these could be dismantled and recycled and, and repurposed into new things? Or was that something you learned as the pandemic hit? No, I I, ha- I had learned, and it's it's a funny story, but I, I I I was probably second year, third year into the company. You know, when you go to a company, they give you a one month training, they give you all the indoctrination of the policies and the propaganda of what the company stands for, and the company I used to work for, Kimberly Clark Medical. There's nothing wrong in saying it. Uh, you know, was very strong about sustainability, and. I took that message to my customers because here in Canada, there's a lot of people who want to see sustainability. And three years into my job, 
there was an opportunity to, you know, come up with a marketing idea for new products, new services. So I had my Jerry Maguire moment. I wrote my little memo and I submitted and rather than getting fired, I just got ignored. So I got really ticked off about that. So I decided to take it on my own. So as I progressed in my job, I kept pushing that sustainability issue. But the biggest problem at the end of the day was you, you as a company who makes a mask are not holding the hand of the customer that um, that you're selling it to. And at the end of the day, that person needs somebody to help them move that stuff out of the hospital or out of the clinic or wherever. And I found the challenge was always the waste haulers and the, and the recycling people. And then I listened to one of your episodes um, when, when you had... Um, when you had uh, Miss LaSalle from um, uh, oh, from Florida, yes. and Tara she was talking, yeah. Tara, Tara, and she was talking about how it's important to you know to to be there and 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 really hold the hand of the customer, and and that's been the biggest problem with plastics industry, and and in in the years is that you know Coca Cola and Pepsi created this whole stream. But it's like, you know, physician heal thyself type of thing, right? It's like you take care of it. You know, we just laid out the, the groundwork, but city governments are not prepared for this type of recycling, especially PPE. They're not. Uh, so somebody specialized had to be there. So as I progressed in medical sales, I realized this is a market that, you know, it can be developed. It can help the environment. It can help my pocket. You know, let's do it. And that's what we did. Finally, after COVID, it, it came to a point that this made sense. So is this something that you were now, are you, where, where are you, call, where, where am I talking to you at? Are you in the U.S. right now? No, no I'm, I'm currently in, a, in Brantford, Ontario, the home of Wayne Gretzky, the hockey player, or the, or, Woo, Alexander, love that. or Alexander Graham Bell, who did his pre- preliminary works to design the phone. Uh, but the phone was then developed in the United States. So we thank you for that. And, and you're welcome. Um, but, at, <laughs> but at the same time, um, we are expanding into the United States. Like I have some high schools in the Chicago area that are buying our recycling boxes because they want to recycle. We have a university in Pennsylvania that's buying some of our boxes. So, you know, there are a lot of companies in the United States, in Canada, who are selling a box program where, you know, put all your stuff in there and we'll take it away from you and we'll find a home for it. And uh, we're Canada's number one, I'll call it boutique recycler of PPE because nobody else wants to do it. So we do it. Are you familiar with TerraCycle? TerraCycle is the person I was just alluding to because TerraCycle. Okay. Yeah, they're, Cycle, they're amazing yeah. because they are working to recycle all these things that are typically very hard for us or that don't and you know are not allowed in our recycling bins at the street. So that's what you know. That's when you said that it it seemed very similar to that, which I think is great. So it sounds like not only are you these boxes are these boxes in hospitals and they're also in the general public so that like I, for instance, could buy one, put it in my community, something like that. Exactly. They, they are everywhere. School boards, shopping malls, dental offices, um, universities, uh, government offices. They're everywhere. Um, they're sleek and we're half the price of TerraCycle. So that's what makes people happy. And plus we're a Canadian solution and people like to see Canadian garbage stay in Canada. I don't know. We're, we're, we're possessive about our garbage. I don't know, but that's what they do. And, and, and that's what, and that's the solution we provide. So what is this? So take, take me on that journey of, okay, I've ordered a box from you. I get this box. What happens? So you fill the box and when the box is full, just like any other box program, there's a UPS label on it. You'll call UPS the, the brown truck will come and pick it up and take it to our sorting facility in Kitchener, Ontario, which is um, the home of Oktoberfest in North America. We, um, we will sort through it. We will uh, log it, weigh it, and put all the data into a computer. And then what two things will happen. That data will be sent to you every quarter and says, congratulations, Angie. Uh, you or your company have you know um, processed um, so much in pounds of PPE and plastic recycling. And we usually break it down like, you know, 80% masks, 15% uh, gloves, 2% sandwiches, right? Whatever we find in the box, that's what we report to you. Now, while the stuff goes through a disinfection process, it then eventually uh, gets disassembled through the machinery that we develop because nobody else had developed the machinery. So we have machines that will rip the aluminum, cut out the nylon, and then we'll bail those plastic scraps, those, those, those squares, and we'll send it to our plastic facility in Brantford, Ontario, where they'll turn into pellets. And now we have a sister company called Lifecycle Health 
which will turn it back into the fibers to make masks and gowns. So it was a big deal for us in North America during COVID that we were dependent on foreign governments. Now we will make it at home. So we don't have to wait for fabric to come in from nor from Asia or wherever it is eight months later on a boat when we can get it eight days later right off the machine. And that's our, okay, that's so our, our secret. Let me go back to something you said earlier. Were you trying to make a funny when you said that there would be sandwiches in my bin? Or were you trying to say like the sandwich wrapper, like a plastic sandwich bag? No, I, going back to what I heard from that episode with, with um, that guest that you have, there's people who are wish recycling. Oh, that yes, yes. Okay. They, they so are throwing, random, random stuff yeah. can end up in the bin is what your point was, right? That sometimes you get things found, you didn't ask for. I have found sandwiches. I have found cigarette butts. I have found um, cloth masks. I have found uh, ev- weird things in, the, in there, okay, that I will not specify. And again, <laughs> it's not a garbage bin. It, it's, 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 it's a white box, bilingual English and French with logos, with little icons that says masks, gloves, this and that. You can't go wrong, but yet people will put stuff in there to test the thing. And we, we do it. We take care of it. If there is something toxic or dangerous, we, we have protocols for that. God, you know, knock on wood, we haven't seen that yet. We've just seen the, nu- the nuisances of pizza slices in there and all that stuff. Ugh, it just drives me crazy sometimes. <laughs> so you said no cloth mask. Is it just those like uh, kind of papery mask with the little folds over the front and maybe those like N95 kind of uh, cone masks? That's the only kind of masks that are acceptable in the bin? To start. And then we take face shields. You know, we take, um, you know, clear face, other, shield, okay. clear face shields, we'll take uh, hair covers, shoe covers, gloves, gowns, um, aprons, um, foam earplugs for sound. You know, like if you're, you're working in a factory, uh, believe it or not, we're accepting hard hats now because hard hats I didn't know was a big recycling issue. Hard hats are crack almost every day and they're solid plastic that can be turned around. We take um, shipping wrap. The funny thing was, you know, you haven't asked the question, but the funny thing was that when we went out there and said, here's our solution to to recycle PPE, people came back and said, can you do this, right? But I said, well, don't you have your own recycler? He says, I don't want to work with him. I want to work with you. I said, well, I'm not geared for that. But yes, but if you do this with me, you'll have so much stuff to process. I have, but I'm not geared for that. But but more and more, we we don't say no to our customers because we believe in customer service and maybe we're Canadian, we're polite. So sure, we'll take your stuff off your hands and we'll figure out what to do with it. So now all of a sudden I'm taking plastic wrapping, I'm taking saran wrapping, I'm taking um, all types of little knickknack plastic boxes and, and cups and whatever it is that TerraCycle won't take, I'll take it. And uh, I find a home for it in recycling and it, it doesn't go to landfill. That's my mission. No landfill. Just so it sounds safe. it sounds like the it sounds like the education part is probably the hardest part so that you don't end up with a lot of crap in the bin that you don't really need and have to, you know, worry about them finding a, a you know trash for. And I feel like it's much like our recycling bin here, even at my house, you know, they, they put, they try to do well, they put a sticker on the top to tell people what the only things that need to go in that bin. But yet when I walk around my neighborhood and I can see my neighbor's recycling bin, there is random stuff in there. So, exactly. I'm assuming the person who would contact you, that's really your point of contact person and you want to educate them the most so that they can kind of um, spread that information out to whoever's going to be utilizing their bin. And I would imagine that a bin in more of a controlled area would be better within a school, within a hospital, within not just kind of sitting out front of a Walmart, right? Then you're going to end up with the cigarette butts and all the random trash, right? You want this in more of a controlled environment. Oh, we we do, but remember, I, I think the key here is we want to make sure that recycling happens. I think the problem is once you start um, thinking about the easy way of doing it, the, all that all that does is give you a certain percentage of what you want, but then you lose the lazy people, right? The people who are wish recycling, you know. We, and at that point, I'd rather take their stuff and worry about sorting it on my end. Um, because okay. I want to make sure that I get a bigger bang for, for that box. Right. But yeah, my life would be easier if I had a much more controlled environment and even in controlled environments, there are still 
weird things that get in that box, you know, like juice boxes in schools or, or markers and crayons. You know, that was a surprise once we got a big gigantic box of markers and it had cracked open and all the masks were full of ink and stuff. And we had to like put it through the wash several times until we can get it cleaned enough that it wouldn't be contaminated. So we could do something with it. So there we go. So have you had any like negative reactions from people? Like if you hit people who said, you know, this is not necessary or, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find some real disadvantage to doing this. I can't even think of one thing right now. And I'm wondering if you've had some naysayers along the way. Angie, I'm going to give you the top three naysayers, the th- the, th- the reasons that stop us. Oh, it's too much money. I said, okay, fine. Don't buy it. That's no problem. Send me a bag. Send what do you me mean a box too much for- money? The, the box? The box. Right. Because when you figure when you figure that, let's say our competitors, I don't want to mention them by name, but we have um, sell their box for one hundred ninety dollars Canadian. I sell it for eighty two. I sell it for half the price in that eighty two dollars. I have figured, you know, an hour's labor. I figured shipping costs. I figured incidentals, accidentals and whatever stuff we have to do. And I'm and I'm making a very small profit because you don't make much profit on recycling, but I'm doing a good thing and you're getting those reports and whatever it is. So $82, oh, it's way too much money. Okay, no problem. If I gave you the box for free, oh, now it's too much time for me. You know, like I, I don't have time to do this. Okay, no problem. So if I gave it to you for free and I was able to make it easy for you that you just throw whatever you want in there. Yeah, but I don't see the value of recycling. You know, like it's at the end of the day, isn't it just a big scam? I said, okay, look, tell you what, three strikes, you're out. You're not for me. You're not for me. Do what you need to do. <laughs> Thank you so much. A lot of people get surprised because um, we get we get the sales leads and I tell my customer service people, I would like that sales lead the minute it comes in within the first 20 minutes, because me as the vice president of the company, the co-founder of the company, I want to call the customer and give them that personal relationship. And a lot of it, I just emailed. Yes, you did. You just emailed it. And I'm calling you right back because we are serious. I want you to know, you know, that you're getting top flight if you're getting it from me, you're getting it from anybody down the line in my, in my, in my company. And a lot of people like that. But then again, you get a lot of the naysayers and, and we deal with it. That's fine. It says recycling is not for you. You want to throw stuff out your window while you're driving in the car. You know, like you want to, you, you purposely want to take a mask and wrap it around the neck of a turtle and choke him. Okay. That's good. Go do that. Okay. Because unfortunately th- these are the types of people that are the part of society that are either too lazy or too ignorant. And I'm sorry if I'm being bl- blunt about this, but this has been the problem for years is that, you know, testify, right? You know, you're, you're, you know, I like Grateful Dead just like as much you do, right? So, what is it? One man, one man picks up with another man spills, right? That's me. And you know, listen, there are so many of those people out there. I mean, I still see people who just flick the cigarette butts right out the window, and it, it takes me everything not to like want to pull up next to them and say something. And I have several times, I've actually pulled up to people, you know, at the light or something. I've been like, Hey, I think you dropped something at, you know, back there. Like <laughs> I try to be nice about it. Cause you don't know who's carrying a gun or who could be. That's really right. Exactly. Yeah. Bad. But, but you know, it is like really in this day and age, are, are we thinking that throwing shit out your window is okay? Like, so that's a whole nother, you know, show, <laughs> but you know, I really want to find out too, like when you started doing this business, did you, was it kind of like right off the ground and running or was this because we were in pandemic, I see that you had this moment of, we have all of this availability. So was it, it started off right away because of pandemic. Do you see anything tapering off now because we are approaching more of this what they're calling this endemic stage. I have to thank, well, okay. I don't want to thank the pandemic for my business. I think I have to thank the pandemic for giving me the impetus to, to realize that my time and my life was more important than, than just sitting at home and watching bad news on CNN or, or Canadian broadcasting. Right. So when we, when we opened our doors, um, yeah, we put a couple of uh, animated uh, videos on our website. We did some LinkedIn and some Twitter and boom, the phone calls started coming in. And that's, like I said, that's when I went out and we got major, you know, retail chains, governments, hospitals, school boards, everybody jumping on board within months. Um, and then we started hiring people. This was weird. You, you know, in Canada, I don't know about the United States, but in Canada, uh, COVID has pretty much caused a lot of not unemployment, but you know, I'll work when I want to work type of attitude. There's a lot of, there's a lot of vacancies, right? 
So a lot of people realize that, hey, I don't have to work anymore. I'll work when I want to work. You know, I'll live off my savings. I'll, I'll live off what the POGI, what we call, you know, uh, unemployment here in Canada. You know, we'll give, you know, the work off their benefits and stuff. So we hit, we hit the ground running. I was out there every day in my car driving from customer meetings, you know, meeting customers outside their buildings. You know, we had to stand you know, what, six feet away from each other, wearing masks and having a talk, you know, or talking through a window or whatever it was. And then, uh, and then things got, got a little bit better. Now we are now in year three of COVID and the, and the good, the good and the bad is that as the FDA and health Canada have done is they've put arbitrarily expiry dates on everything. So a mask is only good for three years or a gown is only good for five or gloves are only good for two years. Now what's happening is all these stockpiles, either in stores like Walmart or in government stockpiles or hospital stockpiles um, are now saying, well, we've got all this stuff expiring. What are we going to do? Well, Ghostbusters, here I am. You know, like this is what a shine a light in the sky. It's not Batman, but it's like the recycling symbol. You know, and I'll come and help you and I'll I'll take that nasty stuff away from you, you know, free of charge. And and that was the good, the good thing is that we figured our model that we could do that. We could just go and say, hey, I, I got a truck, fill my truck up with your stuff. You don't pay, I don't pay, everybody's good. And and then what happened, right? This is this goes back to to discussion. Recyclers will tell you that they don't make any money. And it's true. They don't make any money when oil is cheap because people will just go straight to, to using, you know, virgin plastics made of real oil. Right. But now when, you know, with what's happening in the Ukraine and whatever it is, and gas is here in Canada, like two dollars a liter, um, you're talking about um now these big plastics people are running to people like me. Hey, I want to buy your recycled plastics. I want to buy everything in your inventory. I want you to make me pellets for every type of plastic you got even stuff that we can't process because somehow we can. So it, the truth was exposed in the lie that over the last decade, big plastic, big oil was always saying, you know, you can't work with recycled plastics. It has to be virgin. It has to be straight from the oil well tap. That's the only way of doing it. Now, all of a sudden, yeah, okay, we can buy recycled. Yeah, we need, because there's a worldwide shortage in resin. Like you had, you had a snowstorm that crippled Texas, which I, I, I feel really bad for friends of mine who lived in Texas. You had a hurricane that crippled chemical industry in New Orleans. And then you had a freighter get stuck in the Suez Canal that not only ruined Christmas gifts for people, but also caused a worldwide panic in, in deliveries of resin. These three things were the perfect storm as well as with COVID and with war to cause a worldwide panic for people to start running for play. And now all of a sudden, the funny thing is, I see more and more companies competing with me every day because they started to figure it out. I can go and grab somebody's garbage out of their out of their waste bin and make money. I said once there's gold in the garbage out there. It's just like you know the Klondike gold rush. If you start seeing some people pulling up in a Mercedes and taking stuff out of your garbage don't feel sorry for them. It's that they realize that there's money to be made and they're trying to take your money and you should charge them for it. You know? Yes. Yes. So I feel like this is a no brainer. I feel like every hospital, every medical facility, like those to me are probably the biggest waste factors of people going through all those items that you name. So what kind of, what kind of walls have you hit with those or are they just open arms no matter what hospital system you, you talk to? They are open arms, but the only the only thing is that ignorance, laziness thing where it's like, well, we don't have time for our people to sort it. We want a one step solution. Throw everything in the bag and you'll deal with it. OK, so fine. Throw it all in the bag. As long as I don't find a body part in there, we're good. Right. And that's it. So that's what we do with them. We, we take it now. Sometimes we find weird stuff in there, which we have to come back and talk to them about. But at the end of the day, so it's is all there. Good. Is there something that we can do as individuals? Like, I feel like this is not really a solution for like me as a household that uses a cloth mask, right? That I'm not going to be tossing out a lot of these things, but how can I support what you're doing, which is so vitally important? How can I as an individual support that? You can support us by, by looking around your house and finding other types of plastics that you know you can't put at your curb. So let's use an example. You have to have, okay, I don't know if, if you're uh, holistic or whatever it is, but the average person, you have a, a bottle of Tylenol or Advil. When that bottle's done, what do you do with it? Some places, they'll, they'll take it as recycling. Some won't, right? You'll have pill bottles that when the prescription is done, what do you do with that stuff? Usually it goes in the garbage, put it in. And then if you've got friends down your, down your street, you know, say, hey, look, I'll buy a box. Put it in my garage. Feel free to drop the bag off on me. When the bag is full, Andy will take it. 
you know, it's all in there. But the funny thing is we talked, we talked here in Canada. Now, now it's happening in the United States. We have students doing this as fundraising. What they're doing now is they're buying a box. Instead of selling chocolate door to door, right. Or girl guide cookies, which I, I, I totally love and I, I, testimonial girl, yes. girl guide cookies are great. Um, yes. They're doing this. They're doing this recycling boxes. They're selling recycling boxes either to stores or whatever it is, or local people and say, Hey, collection drive once a week. When we go to church, drop off the stuff, and then Andy will pick it up. UPS will pick it up for him. That's one of the things we can do. Each household, each person can empower themselves. And like you said, if you don't do it from your own home, you can do it, let's say, at church or synagogue or whatever you go to. and Or even at schools or community centers, you can do that. Is the bin like corrugated cardboard or is it like that corrugated plastic sheets like that, uh, like realtor signs and stuff are made of that they, you know, no. put in the yard. No, no, it's, 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 it's cardboard, like, you know, like thick cardboard that you ship stuff in We're we're in the process of finding uh, a, a cheaper way of getting corrugated plastic because a lot of people want to put it outside. So right well, now, that, that's the, what I was thinking. Like, is this yeah. something I could put outside my business? You know, that we're, we have other businesses around us that could be done like that. So I could see where you, that would be a question for people. Yeah, no. If you put it outside, uh, like, and you know, let's say you have a canopy and over your over your door, so you know it doesn't rain on it, you know, or if you encase it in a plastic bag and you know tape it at the end, you know, we're working on it. It's a lot of people have asked us about this now, and like I said, the, at the end of the day, it's it's just the scale of of business is that we started small with bags, and then we went to boxes, and now we've gone to you know huge bins, and now we're looking at uh, probably turning this into like a a recyclable plastic plastic bin. That's super cool. So what about sponsorship? Like, could I, as a business, sponsor a bin? Yes, you could. Okay, cool. So Have you had anybody do that yet? You know, funny thing is, we, we had we had an interest here in Canada that somebody wanted to do it like a NASCAR, where they wanted to to do this as a community thing, and they got local businesses to agree, and they printed out stickers and they slapped them on the side of the box where it wouldn't interfere with uh with the shipping labels or anything and they turned our box into like a nascar box where it's like it, all local businesses were sponsoring this box and it was being run by the rotary which was really fun so that was cool so is i'm keeping the box all the time and i'm merely sending back the contents of the box right like that's no, put into a bag, and box. bag you're sending the whole oh. box to me yeah lock okay. stock and barrel just like TerraCycle. You're, you're buying a new box every time. But imagine a box can hold 2,500 masks. So it's going to take you a while to fill it by yourself. If you have friends, then it goes a little faster. But at the end of the day, the scale of economy is that it's much cheaper than what you would find elsewhere. And then again, if you don't want to buy my box, then do, do your own box. Call me on the phone. I'll send you the UPS label and I'll take it off your hands. So then really it's, it's good for everybody. This is so cool. I had no idea this was happening. And I'm so glad that we were able to come across each other and make this conversation happen. Because what you're doing is not just needed now, even though the pandemic has like, you know, spurred this awareness of PPE. I mean, did we even know what PPE was before the pandemic? <laughs> you know, no. not really. So I find it very interesting that you have turned uh trash into treasure. And that's really amazing, Andy. So um, where can people find you and get more information if they want to get a box for themselves or sponsorship of a box? How can they contact you? Well, perfectly. You can reach me at one of uh, one of four things places. So you could reach me through Lifecycle Revive. So info at lifecyclerevive.ca. That's our mothership company. Andy at meahealth.ca, which is our second company. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn, so you can find me on LinkedIn, set up a relationship with me there, watch me make my comments there. And now, believe it or not, because I've been inspired by you, I'm launching my own um, show called Sustainably Circular. It's currently in pre-production. I'm getting guests in um, every every chance I have so we can launch this thing. And it is, it is solely about sustainability and the circular economy. One of the good things about this PP recycling is that you can take a used mask, turn it into plastic pellet, turn it back into something and redo it, rinse and repeat. That is the key of a circular economy based on sustainability. And I love meeting entrepreneurs like yourself and podcasters like yourself who are spreading the message out there. And one of the frustrating parts was that we're the best kept secret in Canada. And yet 
everybody wants to know about us, but nobody does. So here we are. This is our opportunity to reach out to the masses and say, this is what we do. Come join yeah. us. I can't wait to share what I've learned in, in our conversation today. It's been really enlightening for myself. And I guarantee those who are listening are also saying, wow, how can I, you know, bring that into my community or how can I, you know, find PPE to find another life, which is really cool. So thank you, Andy, for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking time out today and chatting with me. And for those who are listening, you know the deal. If you know somebody cool like Andy, please put them in touch with me. I would love the opportunity to talk to them as well and share the interesting things that they're doing. So until we all meet again, please be kind to one another and love each other. Peace out.